Um, I want to move now to Lebanon because uh, part of this war is also happening uh, in the north and the ceasefire negotiations, Hezbollah has said that they will abide by them. Um, but if there's no ceasefire agreement, the war um, between Hezbollah and Israel in the north will continue. Um, and Hezbollah, let's go to number 15 here, Tamara. Hezbollah on the 200-day uh, anniversary marked 200 days by releasing this video, uh, which is 200 of their attacks, uh, 200 of their 1,650 attacks since October the 8th. Um, and let me just give you some numbers as you're watching this video here. We're seeing all different types of weapons. If you're listening, um, less than one second per per uh, attack here. Many of these videos, uh, some of these videos we've shown you uh, on this program because these are uh, excerpts from longer videos. I just want to give you the numbers from Hezbollah here. Uh, on the 200 day, they marked 200 days um, by saying that they had carried out 650 attacks, 186 against settlements, uh, 1,000 against border sites, 55 against rear bases, um, as far as 23 kilometers deep into Israel, um, 51 targets uh, targeting of aerial assets. Those are the drone uh, attacks that we've been reporting on that have downed Israeli drones, um, and 70 attacks on Israeli bases. Um, the weapons used 320, 352 artillery operations. This is just the number of operations, not the number of munitions fired. So 352 artillery ops. Um, Hezbollah has 40 um, multiple rocket launchers that have 40 uh, rockets per uh, per system. And so um, when they say 352 artillery ops, they mean uh, just the operation, not the number of uh, rockets fired during that. There's 750 rocket operations, 77 sniper operations, 50 air defense operations, 55 uh, drone attacks, um, and 550 anti-tank guided missile strikes. And those are Cornet anti-tank missiles and the Almas uh, top attack anti-tank missile that we have been detailing over these past few months that um, is the first view in battle that we have seen of that top attack uh, anti-tank weapon. And Israeli analysts uh, on Israeli TV uh, defense analysts were saying that they believe that Hezbollah has used only 3% uh, of their um, of their munitions. Um, but if 3% of 750 uh, rocket attacks would be 25,000 rockets, and we know that um, Hezbollah has at least 150,000 uh, in their arsenal, according to the Israelis. So it's uh, a lot smaller than 3% of their munitions. Um, this war in the north has been uh, carefully calibrated between the two sides uh, to prevent um, wider escalation, but Hezbollah has constantly escalated uh, these attacks along with uh, replying to any Israeli attacks and responding to the genocide in Gaza. Um, and so the ability to end the war in Gaza for Israel uh, includes ending the war in the north, where um, Israel has 250,000 uh, citizens evacuated from uh, from 43 settlements that are abandoned, uh, villages and kibbutz in the north that are abandoned. Um, there's a five-kilometer buffer zone inside Israel in the north. There's also one in the south. Um, the buffer zones are for the first time inside Israel, not uh, inside Israel. Uh, Israeli occupied territory as Israeli strategy over the years has had it. Um, and we're seeing the settlement units in the north destroyed um, in a way that we haven't seen before. And people haven't seen uh, and the new strategic bind that Israel is in is that these buffer zones, it's unclear how these buffer zones uh, will be returned uh, to Israel, how these uh, villagers will end up going back home without a comprehensive diplomatic solution, which is uh, something that the Israelis don't appear uh, able to uh, to do. We just saw the last one there. That was the Hermes 900 uh, drone falling from the sky. Um, okay, let's look at number 16 here tomorrow, because these are, this is a, 
This is in uh, the Metula settlement. Um, this is, you can see Hezbollah tracking here, an Israeli armored convoy. This is a Merkava tank uh, that's going to be hit by, um, by a Cornet anti-tank missile. Um, again, this is in, you can see this is a night operation. Um, and the Cornet, you can see it flying through the air there. Um, and we're watching it, it come up upon the tank. And it's another tank uh, hit. And Hezbollah, this is the 93rd armored vehicle that Hezbollah has claimed um, throughout this war um, along in this 200 days. Um, a clear hit on uh, that uh, Israeli Merkava tank in the Matula settlement there. Um, and let's look at number 17. This is a convoy ambush here. Um, this is a convoy ambush uh, in the Sheba Farms area, uh, the occupied Sheba Farms area. Um, and this is a complex attack that we are watching again. The surveillance uh, in the north is significant as well. They're watching the patterns uh, of these armored vehicles over the course of days um, and, and then hitting them when they're in this convoy. This, this convoy is hit at the front of the convoy uh, and at the back of the convoy, trapping the convoy. You can see it here. The first strike will hit. Uh, you can see the two red circles uh, surrounding the targets, and you can see the the anti-tank missile come flying into the screen there uh, and hits the first vehicle in this three vehicle convoy. Um, you can see it's a direct hit on that vehicle. The Cornet anti-tank missile is a very precise uh, weapon. So they, de they, they tend to hit uh, as we clearly see in this case, uh, the front vehicle is hit um, and the back vehicle is going to be targeted in a moment here. The middle vehicle turns off its lights. Um, and this is something that harkens back to the 2006 war when Israeli mechanized uh, convoys uh, invading Lebanon were attacked, um, particularly in Wadi Hajar. Um, and the beginning of the convoy was attacked and the back of the convoy was attacked, trapping uh, trapping the convoy, trapping the middle part of the convoy. Here we don't see a follow-up on the rest of the convoy, but these kind of attacks are just harbingers of what uh, an open war between uh, Israel and Hezbollah would look like. And uh, Hezbollah is carefully escalating. Um, they don't take out the entire convoy here. And this is what we're seeing here is flares being fired uh, by Israeli uh, drones, presumably, uh, in order to try to throw off the the anti-tank missiles that would be fired. It's kind of a cover for their vehicles, but there was no uh, follow-up on this. They just hit the front and the back of this convoy. The Israelis uh, admitted one casualty uh, in that operation. Okay, let's look at number 18 here, Tamara. This is, uh, uh, this is an Almas anti-tank top attack anti-tank missile. And this attack is interesting because uh, this is multiple Almas anti-tank weapons. So you can see that the Hezbollah shows it being launched here. And this is the the another footage here from the side that shows the trajectory of this weapon. Um, it's fired, it can travel up in the air, uh, and then it's controlled from uh, a separate location and can be then uh, the top attack is is called that because it can be then uh, directed back down towards the ground. It can hit concealed targets. Um, and this was an attack on Al Manara settlement, um, an abandoned settlement uh, in the north. Um, and it was multiple, uh, multiple Almas anti-tank weapon attacks here. And we're seeing drone footage here. So this is the first time we've seen this. Uh, drone footage used in the attack. The Almas and the Cornet, they don't set off the air raid alarms uh, in Israel. They don't set off the air defense systems uh, in Israel. Um, the Israeli uh, Iron Dome system doesn't work against these weapons. Um, and so we have seen these attacks happen. This one um, in Al Manara settlement, right after people reported that there was no uh, air raid sirens on this, but the Israelis did say that they downed uh, 
uh, this drone, the drone, uh, one of the drones that came over uh, was downed. These are complex attacks. We saw one on the show last week uh, using drones uh, and anti-tank missiles uh, at the same time, using attack drones, uh, suicide drones. Um, and this this attack was was uh, multiple Almas anti-tank weapons and uh, also uh, a rocket barrage um, as well. So we're starting to see complex attacks. And these these attacks are something that Israel, uh, an open war with Hezbollah is something that Israel cannot uh, cannot win. Uh, we, we we've seen them operate in the Gaza Strip, a place that's besieged, um, and builds their own weapons, uh, unable to defeat the resistance uh, in Gaza. Um, and it's even worse situation for Hezbollah, which is many years ahead of the Palestinian resistance in building this capacity. And also Hezbollah has the uh, ability through a land corridor to import weaponry and uh, weaponry that we haven't seen yet. Um, these Almas, we hadn't seen this Almas uh, top attack anti-tank missile before this conflict used in battle. You can see we're watching here for people watching at home. You can watch the, that video, the video is from the missile. We watched the first person view uh, of that missile strike. And I wanna just bring one more quick one in here, tomorrow. let's do number 20. This is uh, Ansar Allah, uh, the Yemeni armed forces uh, managed to down um, another American US Air Force Reaper, uh, MQ-9 Reaper drone, $30 million drone, at least $30 million drone. Uh, here being downed by a surface-to-air missile uh, by Ansar Allah, the Yemeni armed forces, as part of the battle uh, in the Red Sea. And just to give you, they also gave their 200-day uh, status update, um, and they indicated that the Yemeni armed forces have carried out 120 operations, uh, 100 of them naval operations, um, uh, and 18 of them against Israel. They've also targeted uh, they target a lot as well. And you can see clearly here, uh, this MQ-9 Reaper drone uh, fall out of the sky. Um, they show us the parts of here. We're looking at the parts of this, uh, of the of the Reaper, which the United States Air Force admitted uh, these are known uh, Reaper parts. And the United States Air Force said um, that there was a USAF, uh, MQ-9 drone crashed in Lebanon, or sorry, in Yemen, uh, and they're investigating. So this was downed over Asada in uh, in Yemen. Um, so drones every week, the resistance is able to get. Um, this is an American drone. We've seen Hezbollah getting uh, Israeli drones multiple times uh, throughout the course of this battle. You're seeing here footage uh, from Ansar Allah that shows the destroyed uh, Reaper drone. This is the third confirmed Reaper drone uh, that has been downed since November uh, in the battle in the Red Sea and Israel's southern front uh, that Ansar Allah has carried out um, asking for the genocide, uh, demanding the genocide end and carrying on these attacks uh, until that happens. So the discussion, maybe we'll have more uh, in the discussion about it, but the prisoner exchange negotiations, the ceasefire negotiations, aren't just with Gaza. Um, there, there needs to be a comprehensive uh, solution to this for Israel that just doesn't seem, uh, Israel doesn't seem capable right now of carrying out the type of diplomatic, uh, comprehensive diplomatic agreement that would get uh, a prisoner exchange, that would get uh, the war in the north to end um, and allow their settlements to be rebuilt in the north from their perspective, also the same in the south. Um, and so when we get all of this news about uh, Israeli proposals, um, this not even the beginning um, of dealing with this conflict um, diplomatically. So that is the resistance report. Those are videos all from the last week since you last saw us um, in Gaza, in Lebanon, uh, and also in Yemen. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit like, leave a comment, 
these engagements help us with the YouTube algorithm and it helps us to get around Silicon Valley censorship as much as possible. It does make a difference. You can also support our journalism by going to electronicintifada.net and clicking on donate now. Thank you.